be a playoff, and the POG will go over to Kana on Gragas, legendary Gragas in this game. And the solo kill machine, Kana is back. So he was able to keep adding pressure on that top lane up against um, Rascal. And you can see that T1 are thinking about it. You know, do we go for the Hecarim this time? Do we go for the Seraphine? It's clear that they want to pick these picks that they feel like together have so much synergy, which they do. And, you know, we didn't even get to talk about Tay that much on the last game. He had some really cool global ults, <laughs> but because the team fights were so stompy and were so wombo y from T1 that. We didn't really even get to, to see what Teddy could have done if they were behind. A lot of the pressure would have been on him. Engage with his taunts. You know, you, you don't always have to be the guy that's flashing in and making the crazy, you know, five-man taunt plays. You can just be a soaker, an amazing peeler. Um, and what I want more than anything else, to be honest, um, just like on a personal level, is for T1 to perform well in all three. <laughs> and already the first game was, was a pretty good start, pretty good indicator of that. And... Uh, the Aphelios can do some crazy stuff as we're getting the engage down the bottom side. Life has to flash away, and look at that burst damage. Life in champions as we are going to see a nice trade up here for Kana. Is once again just kind of killing it <laughs> in a matchup that is not easy to do that in. Yeah, you know they're on top of the world, and then all of a sudden you know they go down. It's not always just stable. It's hard for uh, pro gamers to always be you know great. As we're having another trade down to the bottom side. Not going to get that last hit onto life, actually. And you can see Teddy takes enough damage to pressure him off of that. As in comes Cuz. Remember, no flash here on life. And even through the exhaust, that's going to be the first blood on to that Galio bot. Very well baited into that fight. Uh -oh. You know, I, I thought he was ready, but he was not. And here we go. This is where it starts. It's what we wanted to see. We wanted to see Kalid up in the top side. He's taking a lot of damage, but 2v1 here. You can imagine that they should get the kill. The flash comes in from Kana as he tries to pick up at least the one onto Clid, but it does not come through as they will convert on the 2v1. See a very different trade. As remember, life still doesn't have flash, but this time around, Clid is here. But the three on three, who wins this one? A perfect Hecarim ultimate onto the three of them, but with the TP coming in, T1 will try to get out of here. BDD, I don't know what that was. That's going to be a bit of a whoopsie. And now we have the Encore that comes in and Clid, alongside of Ruler, are going to be rooted up. This is a disaster for Gen G and T1 easily clean up. Four and zero on Teddy now. Teddy's got the jaw hitting the floor laugh after that trade as we're going to see X-Tech Ultimatum under <laughs> turret here. Kana is very free kind of thing. You just kind of win in head first, right? Like everybody's grouped up here. Clid is here, so you feel safe. But when you group up like this, on top of one target who's taunted, that gives Cuz the perfect opportunity to hit the triple fear. And then this BDD teleport in is super nice. He Shurima shuffles forward, but then unfortunately pushes Cuz the wrong way. If he hits Cuz the other way, they might trade back one for one, but Faker's here to get the catch with the Encore. I mean, it's just so much damage output at this, this stage. This is a disaster, as you said. Poor play. So either way, we have more plays coming, so we don't have to talk about that one. In goes the Hecarim, and this Kaisa is just insane right now. Five and zero after one more kill. <laughs> as life has to flash away. Baker's here once again, so. When you have so much lane pro like this, Valdez, you could just go around. You can loop around the back side with Hecarim. Yeah. Hasn't been that successful here. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the power now. You're feeling it now, Mr. Wolf? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, Rascal tried to go in there. You know, he has the Dark Harvest here on his Omni Stone, but. Now he actually takes a huge amount of damage, and he's just going to get flashed on. Okay, well, that wasn't <laughs> flash you were looking for. But you know, <laughs> he can be there in a second. He can be there any time. We're trying to get on top of EDD. He tries to put up the wall, and he actually is successful there. Most iconic is your player of all time, so he understands this matchup very well. Oh, boy. We're going to get the sun in the wall, and now Rascal. He's just holding on to his Hecarim ultimate. There you go. Yeah, just going to wait. Sure that there's no dive on a BDD. T1 know that. They see him not rotating up, and then they make a pick happen. They're going to try to trade this back, though. Hecarim is just too fast. Like, you're just not going to get on top of him. Now Kana is alone. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's the one that... Get a charge. BDD needs to get over your ASAP. This Rift Herald could get a charge on the inhibitor turret if they engage here, and they will. Ooh, they're going to find Ruler. Thankfully, he took cleanse in this game, particularly the damage. I mean, Teddy just hops over the top and six spot here to do whatever they want. As, uh, you know, the Hextech Ultimatum, pretty good against Hecarim. 
Yeah. Pretty good against shutting down that horsey. No way out of that one, I'm afraid. You're, you're probably just going to lose the fight. You could maybe commit, try to get Clid to go for the steal and then back away. But at this point, it looks like D1 just want to turn around on this one. The Encore is pretty lackluster. But still, the front-to-back fight is here for T1. They're going to chip away. They catch Rascal. And they don't get much else. So they kill the top so, lane. This is an opportunity for Gen.G to try to front-to-back. But oh, it's just yeah. so difficult. Another turn, turn rather, is going to come on in here. Because no ultimate available. Life just trying to peel for his team. As Ruler does a nice amount of damage here if he is kiting them back. But they're split. Yeah. The root, the slow, rather, is going to come on to Ruler this time around. And he is not going to 200 years this game. That you can't see, which is his ultimate between the top side of Genji and where he ults in. And if they try to collapse on him, he's free. And once again, Genji going to try to deny this. Yeah, trying to ult on a cliff. Karia is going to die. This is going to come to a 50-50. It goes to the Clid. The Udir steals the Baron away. Unbelievable. And now they're going to get the double fear, but that is big for Gen.G. They buy some time picking up that Baron away from D1. It is a huge denial. As watch this killer instinct from Teddy here as he goes through. Like, there's so much peel. And then Teddy's here, and he's like, okay, Faker actually cuts this in half. Rascal, you can't be here, or you're going to get charmed. You're going to get cut in half by this this uh, ultimate combo that comes through. Cuz is there as well. They actually have a big fight happening right now. This is for the Ocean Drake, and the second Kaisa arrives, you turn tail and you run. You're already out outnumbered here. It's just nine and zero. Yeah, you're, you're outnumbered. You're against the Fed Kaisa. You can't be here. Teddy's like hiding the blue buff while he's getting a kill. <laughs> There's just nothing he can do. He is the sheriff, and he tells you where you can and cannot go on this rift. You, there's just such a, a massive lead here. 4T1 that Genji are never like going to be worrying about these sorts of fights. This ruler is just uh, way out of position here, and <laughs> Teddy's like, okay, this is the easiest killer instinct of my career. Coming forward, life also way out of position, gets pulled back, and the teleport comes through. But for what? Like, how do you turn this one around? Rascal's like, T1 just have such control over the map. Okay, again, the one way you can win is if you kill Teddy. Do they have the reach? The nope. answer is no. <laughs> Absolutely not. Zero percent. And we'll watch this again. Like, Rascal's here. Clid, it really wants that follow-up block down. It's a shot, you know, shot call comes through. Rascal's like, I'm here. Hextech ultimatum gets him out of the ultimate, but like, where is any other follow-up damage? Teddy's positioning is too good on top of It's going to come down to if Clid can steal it away, but they're waiting on the DPS. Karriott here to stun him. That is going to be a very simple and clean wave on the bottom side to crash. Very, just as you mentioned, methodical, classic, traditional League of Legends traditional, play. Traditional uh, you know? LCK, you know, traditional style. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Not postmodern LCK. <laughs> Then, you know, we, we enter a stage of the game where we're just an extreme late game and still Genji's comp is pretty good. So I like that they're actually going for the play here. Teddy is going to go into that back line, immediately blows up BDD, just removes him from the fight right from the get-go. That's a cute little exhaust you've got there, says Teddy. Doesn't affect me at all. And BDD won. They felt the pressure, and they went for it. BDD not having any damage in this fight means that T1 could just kind of walk forward here and end the game. Even with a huge taunt, there's just not enough damage for Genji to end this. Yeah, well done in Seraphine's world. Yep. <laughs> You're not going to have much fun with that one. karyo has got a stopwatch. Teddy, he's got a front line in spades this time around. And with the Pelios going down, that is going to signal the end of the game. Cuz going to pull out that last member. Only Clid remains. And T1 will take the extremely dominant and clean 2-0 to zero win tonight over Gen G. They're going to go ahead and let Faker die as the Nexus will go down. But that is about as one-sided as it gets in terms of T1 just absolutely smacking down Gen G. Yeah, this is, this is not just T1 bouncing back with an upset win against Gen G. They made a statement with this roster and it feels like this is the roster that's been a long time coming for fans. This is the roster that won last year in spring, in 2020, 
Obviously, with, again, we have to give the caveat of Keria being in over effort, which I think most people would agree is an upgrade right now. What will we see? What will we get? And it's taken so long to see it. And then they come out and crush Gen G in dominant fashion. And if T1 continue to play this roster and win like this, you know, those questions we had about their upcoming schedule become a little bit less scary. And maybe they make playoffs and make that run, that miracle run through playoffs that nobody would have thought was possible leading up until this moment. I don't want to get everyone too excited, but I think this is a really bright moment for T1, perhaps the brightest we've had all year long. Uh, great mental as well, mentality, right? The, the ability to be tilt-proof throughout a series. All these kind of like, uh, these things that are, you know, different from just straight up mechanics in a game of League of Legends. So. We'll see what yeah. uh, eventually happens with this roster, but as you mentioned, this is definitely a very uh, huge day, I would say, for T1 to, to turn things around. And if you look at these comms here as well, it's very clean. It's the cleanest comms I think we've seen in the T1 victory moment this season. Oh, yeah. Information share only. No flash, moving on to the next, no flash. Who are we focusing? Who's going first? Like, where are we going in on? That's the entire conversation here. There's no jokes, there's no memes in this one, and there's no there's no arguments, there's not four people talking at once. It's clean. Did he say let's get it? <laughs> I think he said SK Telecom. I'm not actually sure what he said. <laughs> he said let's, let's kill him, let's kill him, let's kill him. Yeah, let's kill him. <laughs> well, I was like, what? What the hell, guys? I think there's something to be said, really, Valdez, about the, the amount of experience these players have together. And I think the dream, like with T1's roster right now, the dream is one day you're like, okay, when I want to play this like AP jungle and then Closer plays Aurelia comp, I want Closer in. But then when I want to play Control Mage, I want to put Seraphine in. That's when Faker's in. I want to play Orion, I'll put Faker in. Okay, I want to play Nara, I'm putting Zayas in. Like eventually maybe we can get to that point. I think we're still a ways away from that.